Maranatha, the Lord comes. Today we are talking about the rise of the prophets in the land of Israel. In the last few teachings we've looked at the history of the children of Israel. We went all the way back to Abraham, whom we can call the first Jew, and we've traced the history of the children of Israel, their calling by God. We've looked at the rise and the fall of Israel. And where we left off is the fact that Israel has now been restored to their land, has promised and prophesied by God, even though they've returned to the land in, um, in unbelief. Now, this history is preserved for us in the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Esther. That history is preserved for us, and this history presents for us and provide for us a backdrop from which we are going to talk about the wrath of the prophet. If you will remember, many, many teachings ago, we talked about, with series of teachings, we talked about prophecy. But what I want to focus on today, really, is to look at the rise of the prophet. To help us in our teaching today, let's do a quick summary of the history of the children of Israel. So God called Abraham the Hebrew. Abraham gave birth to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, and Jacob had 12 male children. And these 12 male children became the 12 tribe of Israel. So his, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and they moved on to Egypt because you remember the story, Joseph was sold into Egypt, there was the famine, and finally, Jacob moved with his family to Egypt. So in Egypt, they grew, they became a nation, they became a multiple of people. And they became known as the Israelites. Obviously, we knew what happened. A king rose that knew not Joseph. They, were, they became slave in the land of Egypt. God... Uh, um, called Moses. You, you knew the history of the birth and deliverance of Moses. He was raised in the palace of Pharaoh. He ran off. God called him and God sent Moses back to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. You know the story. So they came out of Egypt, went through the wilderness on Mount Sinai. God revealed himself to the children of Israel and he reconfirmed with them the covenant that is made with their fathers, the, the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then finally, they possess the promised land of Canaan. And in the land of Canaan, the Israelites possess the land. And you remember what we said at the beginning, they were ruled by judges. And they went through this cycle of, of sin, of being sold out to the enemies around them, crying out to God, God raising up judges. And restoring them back to their land, they served God in the days of the judges, and then bang, the judges died, they are back to where they started from. So we, we saw this cycle in the book of Judges, but they were they were ruled by judges. And we, we read judges like um, Deborah, like Samson, and the rest. Israel was a nation. But finally, you remember the last judge was Samuel. Now, I've mentioned two names that will be very important for us in studying about the rise of the prophet. We must mention Moses, who was the prophet. And I'm going to elaborate on that, that God sent to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. Now, Samuel was the last judge who also stood in the office of a prophet. Samuel was the last judge that judge the children of Israel. But you remember in the time of Samuel, the people asked for a king and Samuel gave them a king. The first king was Saul and then Saul messed up and God raised up David. David was a mighty man of valor and David, the Bible says, was a friend of God. In fact, David was a type of the Messiah. The Messiah is called the son of David and is going to rule and reign on the throne of David. 
So David was a man after God's own earth, and David became a king. You remember that? David wanted to build God a temple, and God said, No, your hand is full of blood. Your son will build me a temple. So David, you remember the story, made provision for all the materials that are going to be needed for the building of the temple of God. But Solomon, David's son, built God a temple. So, so Samuel was the first king. I mean, sorry, not Samuel. Saul was the first king, then David. Then after David was Solomon. And after Solomon was Rehoboam. And up to this point, Israel was a nation. But you remember what we said during the time of Rehoboam, Israel became a divided nation. And we have 10 tribes to the north that retain the name Israel. And we have two tribes to the south that are called Judah. So the 10 northern um, tribes were called Israel and they have their headquarters or the the um, their headquarter is Samaria, and then we have the two tribe to the south, and they are called Judah. Uh, these two tribe and their headquarter was in Jerusalem. So this is where the nation was divided, and we said that the ten tribe in the northern kingdom um, have kings, all of which were evil kings. They had total of nineteen kings in the northern kingdom. And none of them was good. So we saw how the northern kingdom was totally dispersed and absorbed into the nation. They were taken into captivity by the Assyrians. They were totally dispersed and they never came back to the land of Israel. The two tribes in the southern kingdom continued for another over 100 years afterwards. And they had a total of 20 kings out of which almost half of them were good. So the, the, the southern kingdom continued for a little bit, but unfortunately, finally, they themselves uh, went into apostasy, they sinned against God, and they also were taken into captivity by the Babylonian Empire. But in this case, they were not totally taken away. You remember what we said that Nebuchadnezzar left some, even though he destroyed the, 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 the city, he destroyed um, um, the, the gate, the city and the temple, but he still left some people, the weak, the sick and the old, he left some people behind but took all the other people into, into captivity. So that was, obviously they went into exile, okay, after that and after uh, Babylon came what? The Medio Persian, and after the Medio Persian came the Greek. So, this was the um, historical backdrop against which we are going to be talking about the prophets. I've gone through this history because this history is important for us to be able to understand the rise of the prophet and the ministry of the prophet. So please keep that history in mind because I'm going to come back to it in a second. Before we move on, let's read from a few portions of the scripture. I want to read from Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in this last day spoken unto us, by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Let's stop there. That scripture says that God spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophet. We said that prophets were primarily God's mouthpiece. They were God's spokesman. You remember what we said? So generally, when we talk about prophecy, or generally when we talk about a prophet, we are talking about a man that was used, or a woman, because we have prophetess in the scripture. So we have a man or a woman that was used by God to speak to his people. And as we said in the past, that fundamentally and foundationally, a prophet is somebody that tells forth, that is a spokesman for God, that brings the message of God to his people. 
But today, in talking about the rise of a prophet, we are not talking about prophet today in the generic form. Okay, we are talking today about what I will call career prophet. For the lack of a better word, I'm talking about today, I want to talk about the rise of men and women that stood in the office of the prophet. Now, that's what I'm talking about today. In a very general way, we can talk about prophets or prophecy as someone who stood or who bring forth the message of God to God's people. And in this sense, you will notice that the Bible actually talks about prophet being there from, from the foundation of, from the beginning of the world. Now, Hebrews chapter 1 that we read here says that God spoke to the fathers. Who are the fathers? He was talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let me read one more place for us in Luke chapter 1. If you remember the story of how John was born and his father, Zechariah, became dumb. You know the story. Finally, through a series of miracles, Zechariah started giving some prophecy. And I want to, to read this to you. Luke chapter 1. Verse 67, and his father, that's John's father, Zechariah was filled with the Holy Ghost and he started prophesying. And he was saying a, a number of things. But in verse, okay, let me read down. Verse 68, blessed be the Lord God of Israel who had visited and redeemed his people and has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spake by the mouth of of his holy prophet now listen which has been since the world began that god spoke through the mouth of his holy prophet which has been since the world began in other words in the generic sense of a prophet or prophecy being someone who brings forth the mind of god or who serve as a spokesman or as a mouthpiece for god there's a sense in which prophet has been since the world began. In fact, when you read the scripture, you will find that, that in the Bible, historical character in the Bible that we will normally not call a prophet, we are called prophet in um, Hebrew scripture. In the scripture, normal people like Jude and Abraham were called prophet. If you read the book of Jude, verse 14 and if you read the book of genesis chapter 40 verse 7 you will see in those two scriptures where um, both enoch and abraham were called god prophet they were god, god they were called god's prophet in a generic um, sense of the word because they were men that were God's spokesman, they were men of God through whom God was revealing his will and his purpose through words and through their history to the world. This is why in the Hebrew Bible, um, books of the Bible that we Gentiles will normally refer to as um, historical book were termed prophetic book in the Hebrew scripture. And this is because in a very broad, um, generic sense of it, history was a form of prophecy. The very history of Israel is actually a prophecy. You remember when we were talking about typology. So we need to understand this prophecy, first of all, in this wide, broad, generic form. So we have books like the book of Joshua um, being counted. Or the book of Judges, for example, in the Hebrew scripture, these books were counted to be prophetic books. And that is because they were prophecy, they were prophetic. And these people that we mentioned, Enoch, um, Abraham, they were prophets in the generic, in the wide sense of, of the term. But the group of people that we'll be talking about today we want to focus on, like I said, if you, if you want to call them the career um, prophets, or if you want to call them the people that stood in the office of the prophet, or, or of the prophetic, because I want us to see the rise of this prophet, because they have something we can learn from them as we move forward. 
one of the things you will also notice um, when you study the scripture is that the Bible took this prophet for granted. The Bible didn't bother to define them for us. Remember what I said, reading the scripture, the scripture tells us that prophet has been from the beginning of the world. We, we read that as we read the scripture, Hebrews, and also in the book of Luke. In fact, when you read also in the book of Acts, I believe chapter 3, let me, let me have a look at that. Yes, Acts chapter 3, you remember <clears throat> when Peter and John um, performed that miracle by the beautiful gate and people came running around. Peter says something. Um, he was talking about, um, about Jesus. He said, Repent ye therefore, I'm reading from verse 19, and be converted that your sin may be blotted out. Then he talked about the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 20. Verse 21 he says, Whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets, since the world began, for Moses truly said unto the Father, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. So in a generic sense, we have this prophet that has been from the beginning of the world, like he said there, um, since the world began. But Moses, remember when I was going through that history, but Moses was a prophet par excellence and also Samuel and I'm going to come to Samuel in a, in a sense. So in the middle of all those people that I said stood in this generic office as a prophet, Moses was God's prophet par excellence the, because the Bible says Moses, God spoke to him face to face and mouth to mouth in a very, in a very clear an intense way, Moses was God's spokesman like nobody was before him. So in Moses, it was not just history being prophetic. God spoke expressly to Moses and God spoke expressly through Moses. And God used him to deliver the children of Israel from bondage in Egypt. So Moses stood in this office of a prophet in a very very peculiar way and God used him you remember when God was sending him to Pharaoh and God in, in that story we've read it before God, God gave us a picture of who a prophet is he said I have made you a God unto, um, unto Aaron that Aaron would be his mouthpiece so, so we see the picture of a prophet there so Moses stood in this um, office of a prophet in a very peculiar way, just the same way that Samuel did. So these two characters in the scripture actually foreshadow for us the group of people that we are going to be talking about who stood in the office of the prophet, who I call the uh, career prophet, or let's just call them the prophet. So I'm going to stop here um, today. Please join me tomorrow because I'm going to pick this up as we look at the rise of the prophet. Thank you and God bless you. Bye.